In this video, we're taking a look at the Gandhi Dancer ATV Trail System South Section coming up. Man, that was a mouthful. Say welcome to the Gandhi Dancer review video. Please bear with me one second here. I'm gonna get this pulled up and we will get started. Uh, as I'm doing this, if you are just discovering Midwest ATV or watching one of my videos for the first time, I focus a lot on trail reviews as well as gear reviews and just other ATV related information. So if riding ATVs is one of your hobbies, think about smashing that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on future videos. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and get started here. So this right here, what you're looking at is the southernmost trailhead that starts in St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here so you can see the uh, city of St. Croix Falls Information Center. While this is the southernmost trailhead, this is also a great spot to stop in and get information on the trail. I went in there and found a few lovely ladies working there that gave me tons of information. Anything from info on the county to the trails, they provided maps, it's a great little spot. Uh, they have warm bathrooms in there, which is always a plus in the winter. So if you stop in the area, if this is where you're gonna start from, and if you're coming from the south, that's what I recommend. Stop in there, say hello, drop a dollar or two in the donation box, and then come out and hit the trail. All right, so we'll go ahead and continue. As you can see, there's plenty of room to park your truck and trailer. So we get out of the trail here, we're gonna take this right and start heading down the trail. Now, one thing to note right off the get-go, and I know this because I went inside to ask is it threw me off, there is a sign when you start that says closed to motorized vehicles. Don't worry, that doesn't apply. I went inside and asked them about it. What they told me was that sign is just a permanent fixture. It never comes down. The reason for it is the trail is not open in the summertime. So instead of taking it down in the winter, they just leave it up and tell you, yes, you can ride on the trail. So now to make sure the trail is open, definitely check the trail conditions by clicking the link either through MidwestATVTrails.com or just going directly to the county website. All right, so as we continue down this road, you're gonna come to this spot here where uh, you can see it's got a gate. You're just gonna go straight through the gate onto a paved road. Now, this is where you gotta pay attention because after you go down this paved road for a very short period of time, you're gonna come to this stop sign. All right, and as we pan to the left here ever so slightly, I'm gonna pause it. As you can see, if you look to your left off in the distance, there's a tunnel and we'll show it in a second. But what I wanna point out is when you hit this stop sign, do not keep going straight. You will not get on the trail. I made this mistake. So again, when you get to the stop sign, you're gonna take a left and this is really where you'll hit the trail. As you can see at the time of this video, there's a KFC, so there's a restaurant off to the left and then you're gonna pull on to the trail on the right. Now, as you take this tunnel, this is really where the trail takes off. As you can see, we're now kind of getting off into the woods. We're still kind of in the city, so you're gonna still see a few buildings and everything else, but I actually really enjoyed this very short section of the trail because it's a little hilly, it's a little windy, and when it, there's fresh powder on the ground, you can really have some fun out there. That's gonna change very shortly, however. So we'll take this for a minute, and then I'll catch up with you when the trail straightens out. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of take the trail to the left. It just flows that way, so you don't have to worry about making a left turn. It'll be pretty obvious. Now, what you're looking at here is basically the trail, all right? So as you can see, it's flat, it's straight. I get it, that might not sound like the greatest trail, but it, it is a lot of fun, and I'll talk about why shortly. So I'm gonna continue to show footage, and as you can see here, I'm crossing a road. I just wanted to put that in there as a reminder to me and to you that there are some highways that you have to cross, so keep that in mind as you're going down this trail. They do come up uh, from time to time. All right, so I'm gonna continue to show some footage of the trail here. Now, a lot of this trail is gonna look the same, but there are a few things I wanna mention, so we might as well continue to show some footage of the trail so you can get a better idea of it while I get through a few things here. So first up, 
the trail type. As you can see from this, it's pretty easy. Not a hard trail. If you're a novice rider, this can be a great trail to get some, some time on and training and just familiarize yourself with your machine. The only caveat to that is remember, this is a winter only trail. So if you're not used to riding in the snow, it can be a good time to learn, but obviously know your skill level and don't do anything that's gonna get you injured. Class, so this is a class one and a class two trail. This trail is also open to snowmobilers for certain times of the year. Now, I don't really know what those rules are, so I don't wanna speak on them. The reason I bring that up is so that you're aware that ATVs are not the only thing on this trail. Like I mentioned earlier, this isn't open for ATVs year round either. It's only open in the winter months when the ground is frozen, and those times are usually from the beginning to mid of December through February. Now for specific dates on this trail, make sure you check the trail conditions through the website at midwestatvtrails.com or directly through the county. I highly recommend checking that link before going to this trail just because you never know with the different seasons and the way trails may be frozen or not frozen, it would really be unfortunate to get out there and realize that the trail is closed. So definitely check that out before you go. Now, as I mentioned previously, this is for the south section of the Gandhi Dancer trail system. There is a northern section and I'll talk about that shortly coming up. Now, one of the reasons I love this trail system in the winter is because it provides you 47 miles of trail with a ton of stops in between. This trail goes from town to town, which can really make the experience that much more enjoyable. So if you hit the southern section, St. Croix Falls, you can drive through multiple towns. In fact, I believe it's seven. So you can start in St. Croix Falls, and then you can pass through Centuria, Milltown, Luck, Frederick, Lewis and end up in Danbury. So you can actually hit seven towns in the south section of this trail, which makes for a great time, especially in the winter when it's colder out, gives you the ability to just have a nice relaxing time on the trail and then stop along the way and grab a bite or maybe something to drink, responsibly of course, and continue on your riding. So you're not just out for that 47 miles, you can stop, warm up, socialize, get some food, get some gas, whatever you want, and then continue the trail. Now the way the towns are spaced out, you would almost think it was meant for the trail system because I don't believe you ever go more than 10 miles tops without hitting the next town. And the trail runs right along or through the town, so it's not out of the way to stop in any of those towns mentioned earlier. All right, now if you're really looking to get some miles in and 47's not enough, especially when you consider you gotta go back, or maybe you're making a weekend of it, you can definitely continue on into the northern section, and again, check the status because that'll depend on the type of year, and the northern section adds another 51 miles. So the northern section starts in Danbury where the southern section ends and goes all the way up to Superior, Wisconsin, and it even travels through parts of eastern Minnesota on its way up there. Now that experience isn't gonna provide as many towns for you to stop through, uh, but it does provide more of that nature-like experience as you get into more remote areas, and that can also be a lot of fun. Check out our trail review on the northern section to get more information about that. All right, a few last things to mention, and then we are gonna wrap this video up. So the southern and northern section total 98 miles. So depending on how you plan your trip, you can get in a full weekend or just many, many miles, depending on what you're looking for. And the way it's set up, if you're not looking for that much, great, you can go part way out, part way back, you can start in Danbury, you can start in St. Croix Falls. However you wanna do it, there's plenty of options. So make sure you check out the website to get those trailhead locations and some additional details about the trail. Now this entire trail is pretty much along the old Minneapolis-St. Paul Railroad grade that used to run in the 1880s, and I believe it ran for about 100 years or so. So the type of conditions of the trail are pretty much gonna be similar to what you're seeing here. In fact, the name Gandhi Dancer comes from the heritage of the railroad that used to be on here because the crews would use tools to work on the railroad made by the Gandhi Dancer Tool Company out of Chicago. And the dancer word comes from when they would work on the railroad tracks and swing their tools. You know, they would have songs and all that that they would sing to stay in sync as they worked on them, hence the dancer, which is where the name Gandhi Dancer comes from. All right, so I realize that history lesson might not help your riding experience much, but I always like to throw those little tidbits of information in about the trail whenever I can. All right, so that's all I got. I hope this video was helpful and entertaining. If so, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. Otherwise, think about hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on future trail reviews as well as other ATV related videos as they come out. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the trail.